Welcome to the hardware architecture training video for the Zinc 7000 All Programmable SoC. Over the last few minutes, you will get a short introduction about the Zinc 7000 architecture. More detailed training videos are available as part of the Zinc 101 portal. Make sure to view those as well. In this training, we will first start by looking at the overall architecture of the Zinc 7000 All Programmable System on Chip. We will then review the key elements of the Zinc architecture in slightly more details, the processing system, the programmable logic, and the IOs. And lastly, we will take a look at the family table to see the different members of the family. If you want to understand the Zinc 7000 family overall concept, the reason why it was created and the value it brings to its users, I recommend that you watch the Why Zinc video also available on Xilinx.com. So let's take a top-down approach and start from a high-level view of the architecture. Zinc 7000 was called an all-programmable SOC because it is the first platform to offer software, hardware, and I.O. programmability into a single system on chip. The software programmability is offered through a complete ARM-based processing system based on the dual-core ARM Cortex-A9. This is a processor-centric architecture which means that Zinc 7000 devices boot and operate like any other processor. For example, the processor does not need the programmable logic to be configured in order to operate. And being on a separate power plane, it does not even need to be powered on, offering a high level of flexibility in operations and improved power management. The hardware programmable aspect comes from the addition of a tightly coupled programmable logic, which is used to extend the capability of the ARM processing system by adding peripherals or accelerators which give to designers the possibility to create their own version of a processor to target their own applications. Lastly, the I.O. programmability is achieved through a large set of I.O. and transceivers. One of the values of FPGA devices is their flexibility to adapt to almost any system by being able to program the I.O.s to interface to most available standards on the market. Well, Zinc follows the same principles and the mix between standard IOs, analog input and transceivers enable them to communicate directly with almost all the elements of your current and future systems. So let's take a deeper look at the processing system now. At the core of the Zinc 7000 processing system, you have one of the most advanced processor available on the market, the ARM Cortex-A9. Actually, you have two of them each having their own NEON engine for multimedia processing and vector floating point engine for some of the most advanced arithmetic applications. There are several speed grades <clears throat> that you can select, but as stated on this, on this slide, you can select a device with a processor running at up to 1 GHz. With a powerful processor, you need a solid memory system, and for this, each processor has its own level 1 cache of 32 kilobytes of data and 32 kilobytes of instruction. Both share a unified 512 kilobyte level 2 cache. In addition, we have added a 256 kilobyte on-chip memory, which can be used as a scratch pad, as a shared memory between programmable logic and the processing system to share data asynchronously or even to store a small real-time operating system. You then have dedicated memory controllers to connect to external dynamic memories or static memories to hold the boot code and the configuration of the programmable logic. With this comes a broad set of peripherals. You have USB, CAN, Ethernet, all built with DMA and many others. Having such a complete processing system enables most operating systems to run on the Zinc devices without requiring any IP to be loaded into the programmable logic. Lastly, the processing system connects to the programmable logic using the AXI interface. There are up to nine of them, which offer very high bandwidth between the processing system and the programmable logic, but also between the programmable logic and the external DDR memory controller. Additionally, Xilinx has implemented the accelerator coherency port, which connects the programmable logic directly to the snoop control unit of the processor to build accelerators with the lowest latency possible. Then you add to the processing system a tightly coupled programmable logic. Zinc 7000 devices share the same programmable logic architecture as the 7 series FPGAs. The two smallest devices 
are using the Arctic 7 programmable logic for the best cost and power. The larger ones are using the Kentex 7 programmable logic for the best performance per price per milliwatt trade-off. But the goal of integrating these two elements together was not to get a solution with two things bolted together into a single chip. The goal was to benefit from the integration as much as possible. And for that, we have over 3000 interconnections between the processing system and the programmable logic, offering bandwidth not achievable on a two-chip solution at several orders of magnitude lower power compared to an equivalent solution built on two chips. From a programmer's standpoint, the fact that the data transfer are done through AXI interfaces make it extremely simple as any programmable logic block connected to the processing system through the XI interconnect is memory mapped and therefore accessible in the simple way. The massive parallel processing nature of the programmable logic makes it ideal to do signal processing and the programmable logic of Zinc is filled with DSP block offering DSP performance far greater than any standard DSP processor, especially when doing symmetric fur filtering. Lastly, there is also an integrated analog block, which can be used for a variety of functions, like obviously getting analog inputs for touchscreen, for example, but also system monitoring of the device and the entire board. To connect your Zinc device to other components on the board or off the board, there are several possibilities. The processing system offers 54 dedicated peripheral IOs that are shared between the static memory controller and the various processing system peripherals. These are part of the processing system, which means that peripherals are connected regardless of whether the programmable logic is configured, which means that they are up and running as soon as the processor starts booting. Now, 54 may not be enough if your application requires you to use all the hard peripherals available. In that case, there is a bridge between the peripherals and the programmable logic, so you can use programmable logic IOs to connect all your peripherals to the outside world. The dynamic memory controller has its own dedicated IOs to achieve the highest performance for DDR2, DDR3, and LPDDR2, up to 1333 megabits per second DDR3 performance. Now, the programmable logic is surrounded by IOs that can be configured to interface to almost anything outside of the device. There are two types of IOs available in the Zinc devices very flexible multi-standard IOs that can actually run from 1 volt to 3.3 volt and the high performance IO which can operate up to 1.8 volt but with higher performance reaching 1.6 gigabits per second in LVDS mode or 1866 megabits per second for single-ended standard in DDR mode. Lastly, some devices in the Zinc family also contain transceivers and the built-in PCI Express block. These transceivers are very flexible and can implement most standards between 600 megabits per second and all the way up to 12.5 gigabits per second. With that, let's take a look at the family table. First of all, one thing that I would like to point out is the fact that all devices in the Zinc 7000 family share the exact same processing system. The same processor, memory controller, peripherals and interface to the programmable logic. The intention here was to offer a common base platform that would allow designers to very easily migrate their application from one device to another, benefiting from the scalability of the Zinc 7000 family. What differentiates these devices from one another is the programmable logic which scales in order to accommodate more or less customization depending on the target application. As you can see, you can move from the left to the right, the device get more programmable logic, which also comes with more embedded memory and DSP blocks. The larger devices also come with a hot PCI Express as well. Similar to the programmable logic, the devices also come with more IOs and transceivers as you select the larger devices. This type of approach of one identical processing system in all devices and different programmable logic gives you, as a user, the possibility to create any derivative product out of your first design. Whether you are using a larger or smaller Zinc device, since your software code is completely portable, allowing you to select Zinc as a platform for many of your developments. 
In summary, the Zinc architecture was built to address your most demanding processing needs with a high-performance multi-core application class processing system with built-in peripherals and to allow you to customize it by adding peripherals and accelerators into the programmable logic to target your particular application, while the flexibility of the Zinc 7000 IOs allow you to connect your Zinc devices to virtually anything else on the board and off-board. More details on each of those three elements can be found on the Zinc training videos. Thank you for watching, and for more details on Zinc, its architecture, development tools, and overall offering, please watch the other Zinc training videos or visit us on www.silix.com/zinc.